Mark 135, Mark 135, and Luke chapter 6, verse 12. So we're going to look at two places. Mark 135, Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Part of the message is, do you have quiet time? Do you have quiet time? Do you have quiet time? Two places, Mark 135 and Luke 6, 12. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Father Calvin, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this morning that we get to come here, worship you, praise you, Lord and learn the scriptures, Lord. And I just uh, thank you for the King James Bible. Uh-huh. Thank you for dispensationalism. And thank you for Bible-believing pastors and preachers, Lord. And I just pray at this moment you fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Amen. Give him the words. Use them greatly, Lord. Help him to preach with power, conviction, Amen. and with liberty, Lord. Yes. And may we learn what you want us to learn and apply that to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Especially if you go to summer camp, we always mention having a quiet time, spending time with the Lord. Christians who fail with their quiet time, who do not have any quiet time, soon grow cold and they backslide. When you don't have quiet time in your life, I could guarantee that you're backsliding and as a Christian, you're very cold. When you're not hot for the Lord and you're cold, you're useless for the Lord. Right. Instead, you are becoming a tool, or already a tool used by the devil. If you don't have any quiet time in your life, which means all those time that God has given you to spend with him, at least some portion of your day with him in quiet time, you are spending all those time with something else other than the Lord. And can you imagine anything better than to spend time with the Lord? And you could always say, you know, if you guys are start dating, oh, I love this guy, I love this girl, and those are so precious to me. Yeah, I mean, it could be. But he said more precious than spending time with the Lord. Oh, you know, I, I love playing this new sport, you know, pickleball. You know, I love it, you know, better than tennis. You know, I'm just going to play all the time. Is that more important than spending time with the Lord? Ah, uh, you know, pastor always says you've got to keep your body, you know, healthy. So I'm just going to work out and work out and work out, you know. And then, but you don't spend time with the Lord. I mean, is that really better than spending time with the Lord? You know, qu- quiet time is literally the secret ingredient for you to have a great Christian life. If you do not have quiet time, then you don't have that secret, super important ingredient in your life. Can you imagine? You know, I, I love to eat, and I love good food. You know, my wife makes me all the food. And if she were to miss special ingredient and in, say something, you know, soup that she makes, it's not going to taste as good with having that ingredient. For example, if that dish needs salt, but you don't have salt, is it going to taste as good? No, it's not. If that dish needs meat, but if you don't have meat, it's not going to taste good. Same thing, as a Christian, if you do not have quiet time every day, it's a daily activity, it's daily time. If you don't do it on a daily basis, then it's going to make you become cold. And you are, you are backslidden. And let's just admit it. I mean, including myself, right? If you are cold, if you are backslidden, that means you don't have quiet time. Because quiet time is that time which will 
help you reflect your Christian walk with the Lord, help you go back and see all the wrongs that you've done. It's time for you to confess your sins. And people say, you know, I just don't know how to, because you don't spend time with the Lord. And some people say, I don't even remember what to, you know, confess my sins about. Hey, spend time with the Lord. Holy Spirit will help you remember certain things. You ask the Holy Spirit to, you know, remember, remember certain things. Because, you know, just on the topic of confessing sins, it can't be generalization. You can't be like, Lord, I'm so sorry for everything that I've committed since I got saved until now. It doesn't work like that, right? There's no sincerity in anything. I mean, can you imagine, you know, you're a married couple, and then say you guys had a huge fight, and you've done wrong to each other, said some hurtful things, and you know, a lot of guys probably don't want to go into any detail, right? You don't want that deep talk, deep conversation. You're like, okay, honey, you know, I'm sorry for everything that I ever said to you. And then she, and then your wife brings up, what about this? What about that? What about this? I don't care about your, you know, being sorry about everything. I just want you to make sure that you're sorry about certain things so that you don't make the same mistake again. Because if you are not specific in your prayers, especially confessing your sins, you're going to do it again. Because you don't remember, right? Say, say you committed, I don't know, uh, you committed sin with your mouth, right? And you're like, God, you know, I'm so sorry for the sins that I committed with my mouth. You know, this, you know, bad things, sinful things that I said. But if you don't remember and, you know, be specific about it, it's not going to work because you're going to do it again. That's why when it comes to confessing sins, you know, just be very specific about it. Don't be like, you know, Lord, please forgive me for everything that I've done today. And that's that. No, you got to be specific for each, you know, sin that you've committed. Like the whole conclusion of all this is what? If a Christian perseveres in the quiet time, who has quiet time on a daily basis, they will grow steadily with the Lord day by day. The whole point of our existence is what? Be something for the Lord. Do something for the Lord. Please the Lord. In order for you to do that, then you have to grow. You have to grow steadily. Again, Christian walk is never, you know, you jump from level 1 to level 3,000 like that. It's always level 1, level 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. You know, it just goes step by step, a very, very slow process. In order for that to happen, it has happened day to day. D.E. Haste, missionary to China, said that they never knew which candidates that arrive on the mission field would do well in the years to come, for it all depended on how well they guarded the quiet time. Many times people are so busy with their life, even in the ministry. You know, it's not a bad thing to witness to others. It's not a bad thing to teach but if they overwhelm you and you don't spend time with the Lord, you don't have that quiet time with the Lord, then it's going to fail eventually. That's why you have to guard. I mean, that's a, that's a strong word. When do you guard anything, right? You want to guard your children from the wickedness of the world. You want to guard yourself from the you know, wicked things in the world. So when you're guarding something, it's very significant. You have to give effort. I mean, I mean, if you're playing sports, if you're guarding somebody when you're playing basketball, whole goal is what? You don't want them to score, right? You have to guard yourself when it comes to quiet time. Because, Christian, you ask yourself, when was the last time you consistently on a daily basis spent time with the Lord? Just you and the Lord. I mean, we saw Lord. He's a great example. Way before sun rose up, right? He spent time in quiet time, right? He went into the mountains, spent time with the Lord. And don't tell me that, hey, you know, at work, I have my own quiet time. I mean, you're telling me that all those things going on around you, and for that 30 seconds, 60 seconds, you call that a quiet time. It doesn't work, you know? Quiet time with the Lord is significant time. 
And it has to be more than a few seconds in your life. It has to be more than a few minutes in your life. The Bible says in Psalms 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. How are you going to know and how are you going to stay still unless you don't spend time with the Lord? Right. When kids have to stay still, like our young people over there, it's hard. But in reality, comparing our Christian life, we're, we're in the same boat. Amen. It's very hard for us to stay still and spend time with the Lord. We turn into little kids. We're always fidgeting. Right. We have to talk to somebody. True. <laughs> the funny thing is that when kids are by themselves and we say, okay, stay still, they do a great job. They have no distraction. They don't have any other temptation. However, when they're all together, and there's always going to be a ringleader, right? One's going to like instigate. They're like, hey, hey, hey. And then when it's time to get lectured, they're the biggest weasels, right? Well, I didn't say anything, right? At least be a man about it or a woman about it. And then be an accountable person. I started this. I'm at fault. But how many, how many kids actually do that? Maybe one in a diamond, dozen, or what? You know, Very few. But they have to grow their character. But as Christians, like you and I, when it comes to that quiet time, just special time between us and the Lord, we behave just like little kids. Yes. We're always fidgeting. And we always try to see when it will end. I mean, you started the thing, and you're the one who's trying to end it fast. At least in their case, they're like, okay, we preaching started at like 10.30. Well, maybe around 11, 11, 10, you'll finish. So they kind of have their own ideas. And you have your own ideas. But when it comes to spending time with the Lord, you start and you finish. It's not like I'm telling you or forcing you to do it. The conviction inside of you, Holy Spirit convicting you to start and finish when you need to finish. Right? Not when you want to finish. Get that straight. Because I want to finish, my flesh says I want to finish within 60 seconds. Get on my knees, pray quickly, and get up and do my other things. That's what flesh wants. But no, that's not what your spirit wants. If you're saved, your new man wants to spend much, much time with the Lord. That fellowship is very special. However, how many of you, just ask yourself honestly, right? How many of you actually stay still and just spend time with the Lord? Because if you don't spend time with the Lord, you will grow not steadily. You grow fast. You're fast. You're going to grow fast in your way to your backsliding state and your cold state. That's why when you read the Word of God, when you hear some preachings and do Bible study, it doesn't hit you like it used to. It's become so cold. I remember, you know, when I first got saved and when I first found the King James Bible and the truth, everything was really hot. Yes. I mean, it was hot, right? Every single person that I ever got in contact with, I had to tell them about mm. salvation. Yeah. I had to tell them about the Word of God if they're saved, King James Bible. But somehow, in your Christian walk, it's never flatline. Man, it goes up and down, up and down. I don't know. I mean, I don't see that person like how I used to saw them. You know, they're lost souls or, you know, even Christians, they need the truth. I'm like, okay, you reject the truth. You know, it's on you. Well, you lose that. Why? Because I lost that quiet time. You know, I missed that quiet time. I don't have that quiet time like in the past. Then what's going to happen? You become cold and you become backslidden. You ask yourself, everybody here and who's listening, is your heart cold? Or do you feel like you're in backslidden state? Yeah, there's a solution. You need to have quiet time. See? So then when it comes to, so we know the definition of quiet time, right? Now, it's that special time between you and the Lord. That is the definition of quiet time. Then what are the ways to have that quiet time? How to have that quiet time? 
You know, number one thing is that you have to spend time in the Word of God. You have to spend time in the Word of God. I mean, you have to read the Word of God. You have to study the Word of God. Because Psalms 119, 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Okay? Again, Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. As a Christian, spiritually speaking, if you want to have a good, successful Christian life, you have to spend time in the Word of God. I mean, that's part of quiet time. Lord speaking to you. Right? You have to let the Lord speak to you. In order for you to do that, you have to spend time in the Word of God. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, you know, I don't know why the Lord doesn't speak to me. I know why. You don't go to the Word of God. I don't know why the Lord doesn't speak to me like those, you know, Pentecost and Charismatics in my dreams, you know. They're wrong, you know. That's, that's a, you know, angel of light, devil speaking to them. Amen. But if you really want the Lord to speak to you, spend time in the Word of God. And then obviously, after you spend time in the Word of God, you've got to spend time in prayer. That's the fundamentals. If you want to know how to have a quiet time, spend time in the Word of God, which everybody knows and knows that you have to do, and you have to spend time in prayer. Matthew 6, 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I mean, does your family know that you pray and spend time with the Lord? I mean, that's a question. I mean, do they ever see you pray and spend time? Kids, I just have to ask kids. I don't have to ask you guys. I don't have to ask any adult. I just have to kid, ask you know, your children. Do you ever see your parents spend you know, time with the Lord? You know, this, you know, unless you train them already for this question. You know, they'll, they'll usually tell, tell the, you know, correct answer, right answer. Yeah, you know, it'll be a good testimony not to lift you up or anything. You know, yeah, my dad, my mom, you know, I see him, you know, when I have to wake up early, you know, I see him like, you know, praying to the Lord on their knees, right? Again, another one, it's a posture. I'm not saying that, you know, you should never talk to the Lord while you're laying down, you know, well, what's going to happen when you're laying down? You know, your body's going to be like, okay, let's go back to sleep, right? That's why you get on your knees. I mean, if you want to follow Lord Jesus Christ, how did Lord pray? Do you think Lord prayed just lying down, you know, on a bed or on the sofa and just pray to the Father? No, he knelt down and he prayed for hours and hours. I mean, what do you do when you have quiet time? I mean, do you actually spend time with the Lord in prayer on your knees in a secluded place? I mean, obviously, you don't want your TV on. You don't want your music on. You're like, okay, I'm going to spend time with the Lord. But what's the definition of being quiet in the first place, right? Quiet time in a secluded, quiet place where you're going to spend time with the Lord. We saw Jesus Christ as our great example who had quiet time. Let's look at some other folks. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. We'll look at Abraham, friend of God. Genesis chapter 19. There are great examples in the Word of God. And we want to follow and we want to be like how they spend time with the Lord. Genesis chapter 19, verse 27. And there's a common theme, and that's something that you and I have to follow. Genesis chapter 19, verse 27. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. I mean, he spent time with the Lord in the morning. You and I have to spend time with the Lord in the morning. It's a given. 
Lord rose early and spent time with the Lord in the morning. So what is one of the biggest hindrances of anybody, any Christian, having a quiet time? Sleepiness. Your laziness is stopping you from having quiet time. Man, just, just admit it. You know, I'm not here to knock you down all the way. After you get knocked down, Christian ways to get up. If I've been lazy and if I've been sleepy and that's been causing me to stop having quiet time with the Lord, I have to get right with the Lord. Amen. I have to cut my sleeping time. Yes. And that's it. I mean, if I have four hours of sleep on a daily basis, then cut it down to three hours and 30 minutes. Right? If you have two hours, cut it down to an hour and a half. Right? We have a brother who actually is going through that. Right? But if you're sleeping nine hours a day, cut it down. Come right? I mean, do you think the Lord will harm you to cut your sleeping time to spend more time with him? I mean, we're not talking about four hours because none of us here, I mean, maybe some, but I I mean, I can't say everybody, but most of the people I know are not on your knees four hours a day spending time with the Lord. Not even an hour, not even 30 minutes. Forget about 15 minutes, right? I mean, who are you kidding? You know, five minutes? (laughs) Or even two minutes? Or zero. Majority is zero. That's just law of average. You know, it's zero. I mean, don't be offended by it. You know, you're part of the majority, but there's always few, there's always few out there who's not like the majority. And those few are the ones that God uses. Those few are the ones that who have right relations with the Lord. Those few are the ones that when I ask, or if you were to ask, do you have quiet time? They Humbly say, I do have quiet time. Not to exalt themselves, but exalt Lord Jesus Christ. Because through the quiet time, who do you think is going to get most of the blessing? Or all the blessing? You. But who gets the glory? Lord Jesus Christ. If Lord Jesus Christ is not getting glory in your life, because you don't give him time. That's the thing. The more time you give to the Lord, more glory he gets. The less time you give to the Lord, less glory he gets. Simple as that. I mean, if the kid doesn't spend time with the parents, how are they going to know what their parents like? If kid doesn't spend time with the parents, all they're going to do is receive all the junk from something else. That's why, you know, when our kids go to public school or outside, you know, have some interaction with the worldly stuff, they bring all the junk in. They get polluted by those things. Yes. How are they going to get rid of it? Then as parents, you have to get rid of it. How do you think the Lord's going to get rid of those things for us? By spending time with him. And again, two things requiring, right? Studying the word of God and spending time with him. And we see Abraham, right? Early in the morning, spend time with the Lord. But did he stop there? Are we going to stop when we wake up early in the morning before the sun rises? We spend time with the Lord. I'm done for the day, you know? Very, some of you guys would love to do that, right? Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to live the rest of my day for my own sake. No. Let's go to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. You know, Abraham is a great example. You know, Genesis chapter 26, verse 24. Genesis chapter 26, verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. So day and night, spending time with the Lord. Nighttime too. So best way to have a daily quiet time is what? Early in the morning and nighttime before you sleep. Right? Yes. It's something that's lacking in 99.9% of Christians this day and age. Yes. Simple as that. Because there's too much pressure in your life from your flesh, from the world, and the devil. Right. And because you cannot resist those pressures and temptations, you don't spend time with the Lord. But is that a good excuse? There's never a good excuse, spending time with the Lord. 
So if you have been using excuses like that to tell the Lord, Lord, my body is too tired. My mind is too weary. Uh, I'm just, I can't do it. The Lord's going to be like, you know what? I died for you on the cross, shedding precious blood. I prayed all night, right? Sweat drops of blood came down. How many of you ever prayed until sweat drops of blood came out of your pores? I mean, were you that serious? I mean, that's really, really praying hard. But Lord prayed that hard so that you and I can have salvation, so that he could drink that cup, right? Amen. Cup of sin for the entire world. Yes. And he did that for you and I. Then why can't you and I try to do it even a little bit in our life? That's good. Again, each person just, you know, it's different. However, you know yourself when you give it your all. If giving it all in the morning is 15, 20 minutes, that's a good start. Because if you never, if you never woke up before 6 o'clock in the morning, and then you try to start, you know, it's going to be very hard. Your body's not used to it. But your job as a Christian is not to let your flesh lead you. Amen. You have to lead the flesh. Yes. You have to. Amen. I mean, flesh goes, hey, let's get extra minutes of sleep. You tell them no. Yeah. Like, no. I mean, you're dead already. Why is that thing telling me what to do? Can you imagine if there was a John Doe in the cemetery, and then you're getting instruction from John Doe? Hey, you know, I want you to do this and that. But that's not how you live your life. You live your life by understanding and getting orders and doing things for the living things then if your flesh says otherwise, you have to resist that flesh. Then, you know, Abraham spent time with God morning and night. And also, he actually had a special place to talk to God. You need to have that place. You, know, you have to have a habit. You have to make that part of your life. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis 13, 4. I'm still looking at the example of Abraham. Genesis 13. Genesis 13. Genesis 13, 4. Unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first, and there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. You need to have a special place in your life. To talk to the Lord, you know. I mean, people say, oh, isn't that becoming too rigid, you know, you're almost turning into, you know, traditional people. No, no, it's different. You need to have a special place that you go to, at home somewhere, right? I mean, if you have a acres and acres of land, hey, you're blessed. Go somewhere in the, you know, land somewhere and spend time with the Lord. You have to have a place where you spend time with the Lord. Of course, you talk to the Lord anywhere. But when you're having quiet time, whether it's next to your bed, you know, in the closet, you know, somewhere in your home, you have to spend time with the Lord. It's like people, when you go to school, you have a pattern, right? I wake up at a certain time and I have to go to the bus stop if you take school bus. Or, you know, if you're going out with your parents drop you off, you know, you get into the car you know, by 8 o'clock and then parents drive, off, drive you off to your school or school bus picks you up. You have to have that special place to talk to the Lord. You know? And it becomes second nature for you. And it's not you're doing it just out of habit. And then you're going to get closer and closer to the Lord. And you can't wait for the time to talk to the Lord. Literally. I mean, there is a time every day you talk to the Lord, but that special time, you call quiet time, man, you could really pour out your heart to the Lord and you pray. That's why prayer warriors like George Mueller, they just pray for hours, right? I mean, Daniel just prayed and prayed and prayed. 
Do you think it just came out of nowhere? It doesn't. Because they were spending time with the Lord on a daily basis, and they love hearing from the Lord and talking to the Lord, it became so special to them that they never want to miss it. I wonder when was the last time you never wanted to miss time spending with the Lord? Like, man, without, if I don't have quiet time, it's like my day wasn't worth it. Right. Literally, that telling the Lord and telling everybody, without having right fellowship with the Lord, my days weren't worth it. It was like, you know, useless day. How many useless days have you had so far this year? We're already in November. I mean, how many of you actually had that quiet time with the Lord every day from January 1st to today, November 13th? If you haven't, like you should have, then you should confess your sins of being cold and backslidden and then get right with the Lord. And this should be the start of every day upcoming until the Lord comes back having that quiet time on a daily basis. So we have a great example of David. We have another great example. We have David. I mean, I said, oh, we have a great example of Abraham. Next example is David. Let's go to Psalms, Psalms 5, Psalms 5, Psalms 5. So God has put all these men of God as example for us. And we always talk about Abraham, prosperity. No, there's much more to Abraham than prosperity and getting blessed. He spent time with the Lord. And David as well. Psalms 5. Psalms 5. I'm going to look at verse 3. Psalms 5. Psalms 5, verse 3. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And we'll look up. Psalms 42. Psalms 42. We have a theme here. So, man, these forefathers of faith, they're spending time with the Lord in the morning, for sure. But is that all? Psalms 42, verse 8. Psalms 42, verse 8. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night. His song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. He spent time with God in the morning and at night as well. David, man after God's own heart. You and I have to spend time with the Lord in the morning and at night and everything in between. That tells you where your spiritual state is at. You don't have to go too far, right? Well, you could just ask, you know, how much quiet time do you have? I mean, do you even have quiet time, frankly speaking? So David spent morning and night with the Lord. Not only that, you know, what helped him with his quiet time? He memorized scriptures. You have to start memorizing scriptures. You know, it will help you from sinning. It will keep you encouragement. It will keep you going. Amen. I mean, that's what David did. I mean, Psalms 119.11, again, what said? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He meditated in the word of God. Right? So throughout the day, wouldn't it be great if you meditate in the word of God? Yes. And then during the quiet time, you share with the Lord. Hey, Lord, you know. I was meditating in this verse today, what you said and what the Bible says. And then you start having conversation. People say, I don't know what to pray. Because you don't read the word of God. So you don't know what to pray. You don't know the subject. You don't know the text. You don't know anything. If you're learning about U.S. history, you know, bless our veterans past week, you know, you know, Veterans Day. If you don't know anything about veterans, how are you going to talk to veterans about veterans? If you don't know any history, if you don't know, if you don't even know what that means, if you don't know what veteran is in the first place, that's almost like same thing. You're going to the Lord, Lord, let's have a conversation. You don't know anything about him. 
You don't know what he said. You don't know what he wants you to know. Right? right? So you have to meditate in the word of God. You know, if you are fond of someone, if you like someone, you want to get to know more about that person. Right? And when you have conversation, what do you think they want to listen to and hear? About themselves. Sweetest name, I mean, sweetest word for any human being is their own name. It is. About themselves. If you do that with normal human beings in your life, don't you think you should do that with the Lord Jesus Christ? Who's more and more and more special than anything in the whole world? I mean, first of all, he's inside of you. He saved you from hell. And he's the greatest friend ever. I mean, what a friend we have in Jesus. He's not only your Lord and Savior, he's also your friend. I mean, if he was that special to you, you probably want to know more about him. Or you've gotten to know more about him. That's why when someone says certain passage from the Word of God, and you have no idea about it, you know, if you're a new Christian, you're growing, that's, hey, hey, learn, right? Study. But if you're a Christian for a long time because you neglected the Word of God, shame on you, right? right? They're talking about Sermon on the Mount. It goes, oh, what is that? They're talking about tribulation, rapture, you know, Old Testament, prophets, you know, even stories of Bible studies, right? The Old Testament. You're like, oh, what is that? I mean, as a Christian, it's not something you should be proud of. I've been going to church for 15 years. Go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what do you think about that story about Joshua? You know, who's Joshua? <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. You remember Caleb? Or Caleb Park at our church? <laughs> I mean, and then you start going, oh, yeah, hey, Bartholomew, you know, Barnabas, right? Who? Barnabas? You know, banana, right? <laughs> when that's the type of reaction and the things that average Christian, I'm talking about average Bible believing Christian, displays. Why? Because they don't have quiet time. You don't have quiet time. And quiet time constitutes everything studying the Word of God, praying, memorizing, and it becomes your morning and night time special place. I think. If you were to take it seriously, you look forward to your quiet time on a daily basis. It's, some, it's that special time where I can spend time with the Lord, where I could actually have a great conversation, deep conversation. And I'm, I always you know, compare it with the person that you love. Don't you love it after a long day of work, just you and your loved one? and spend time talking about what has gone throughout the day. Maybe you had a hard day. You know, coworkers were no good. You know, customers were no good. Your boss was, you know, giving you a hard time. Or you have a great thing to say. You know, we had a great time at work, you know, good customers, good boss, or whatnot. And then you have conversation. And then you guys grow together, you know, husband, wife, or whatnot. Why is that never happening in your Christian life with the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, he already knows everything that's going on in your life. Mind you, he's God. But do you ever talk to him about it? I mean, he's always there. As they say, he never moves. He's always there. It's us who's always moving away from him, trying to avoid him. Then you have to... Get right with the Lord and make sure, make a commitment in your heart, not in your brain, because your brain will deceive you, as you know. But your heart has to commit to the Lord. Lord, I've neglected this quiet time all these years. I don't even remember when I had a very special time with you on a daily basis. 
I confess my sins. I want to get right, Lord God. I want to get out of this cold and backslidden Christian state. I want to spend more time with you morning and night. You know, devil, the flesh, and the world's going to try to stop me. Lord, please help me. Again, you can't do it on your own. Man, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. you got to rely on the Lord. But your heart has to be willing and start putting it into action. Then once that happens, you're going to have a frequent quiet time with the Lord. Literally, you know, it's going to be frequent. It might be morning, day, and night, like Daniel and like David. But you have to start somewhere, you know. Don't overdo it either. Don't have a too high expectation of yourself, okay? It's like someone who says, you know, I'm going to read through the Word of God. So you read 50 char- chapters today, and you get burned out. And then for the next two months, you read like one chapter, or you don't even do it. So take it one step at a time, and then ask God for strength. Because 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord, Je- Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You have to grow. And growing in the Lord is steady. It's never fast, fate, fast, you know, like a freeway type. No, it's like a hiking. You're hiking little by little, little by little, that uphill. It's never a downhill. It's always an uphill battle in Christian walk. But little by little, little by little, little by little, your body gets trained. You you get to breathe in fresh air, you know. Yes. And then you grow and grow and grow. Don't let your flesh and your old wicked ways stop you from having quiet time. Remember, this quiet time will dictate what kind of Christian you are today. Let's pray.